Welcome back to What the Flick. I'm Matt, that's Christy. Uh, this week we see a bunch of movies hit uh, home video, which honestly happens every week, but uh, a bunch of stuff that was in Oscar contention. Uh, some recommended movies, some not recommended movies. Um, <laughs> Just because they're nominated for an Oscar does not mean we're right. gonna recommend it, you see it. <laughs> this, is, this movie is on neither of our list, but I'm just intrigued by the title because I really wish that this was the prequel to Birdman, <laughs> a movie called Bird Boy. <laughs> The Forgotten Children. I have no idea what it's about. When his wings were small. Yeah, he right. was on Off Broadway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he was still trying to figure it out. Yeah, right. I have no idea what Bird Boy is, but it is at 75% on Metacritic. On Metacritic. So, uh, all right, so what's your recommendation for this? So one? my pick is I, Tanya, right? No, no, no. Your pick is I, Tanya. Um, my pick, my is I, pick is The Disaster Artist. It's very confusing. So The Disaster Artist is a movie that I, when I first saw, I thought, if you have not seen The Room, you won't get it. You know, The Room is this infamously terrible movie, supposedly the worst movie ever made. Um, Tommy Wiseau, who wrote, directed it, stars in it, the crazed mastermind behind it, um, is truly singular and has gained some infamy, but I felt like if you were not already a part of Tommy's cult that you wouldn't get it. But The Disaster Artist is about the making of The Room based on the book about the making of The Room. And- By the co-star of by The By the co yeah, by Greg Sestero, who co-starred in The Room. So, um, it's sort of, you know, if you love movies and if you love movies about how movies are made, it's a lot of fun. It's a great cast. Um, James Franco got a lot of award recognition, not an Oscar nomination, but the film did get a screenplay nomination for Best Adapted Screenplay. Um, and it is sort of a tricky thing that it pulls off by, you know, exposing and revealing and reveling in the ridiculousness of it all and, and the terribleness of it all without being mean. It's not mean about Tommy. Um, Tommy's in on the joke. I mean, Tommy has been out there promoting this and he's everywhere as we will talk about later on in, in a different context. Yeah, but I'm fairly convinced Tommy is retroactively in on the joke. Oh, I retroactively don't think he, was, he is. Not from right. the beginning he wasn't. I think, or I think he's, I think he's at least sharp enough to understand he needs to play along with being in on the joke. Right, because at first he, he intended it to be a romantic drama, right? And it's not. It's and, neither. And the disaster, it's neither romantic nor, nor dramatic. dramatic. No, and, and the disaster artist compresses the time in which Tommy goes from, oh, I really mean it to be this kind of movie, to embracing the way everyone laughed at it. I mean, they make it seem like it all happened in a night, and it actually took a longer period of time for him to go with it and just accept the fact that People are gonna go see this movie, and perhaps not for the reasons that I meant when I made right. it. Um, but it's um, it's a it's a funny movie. It's ultimately kind of an affectionate movie. It's about you know, the dreamers and the dreams they dream. You know, people <laughs> who come here with dreams of stardom who perhaps should not be stars. So, mm -hmm. it's fun. But yours? Mine. We talked about this before we started taping. I'm let's conflicted about, about recommending this. Okay, well let's talk about so it. So the movie is I Tanya. I recommend I Tanya. Terrific movie, <laughs> terrific movie, mm -hmm. uh, great performance from Margot Robbie, Oscar winning performance by uh, Alison Janney, who had the great speech, she's like, I did this all myself, it was a terrific <laughs> speech. Uh, this movie recontextualizes how you think about Tanya Harding to the point as, that as they were making Tanya Harding jokes, in the Oscars, I was like, did you guys not see that film? Come on. Like, not okay. We all like her again now. <laughs> yeah, or at least like, well, she it's had, more she complicated. Had, she had a rise and a fall and then a rise and right. a fall. Yeah. Um, here's where I'm conflicted about Let's it, about is it. that I have felt pretty strongly that I wanna see Tim League step down from Alamo Draft House mm -hmm. as the guy running Alamo Draft House. Uh, and I, Tanya is released by Neon Releasing, mm -hmm. which is part of the Alamo Draft House Corporation. And it, bothers me that Tim League has, according to reports in the last couple months, has had had multiple reports by his employees of harassment and basically did nothing. And, and hired somebody back who he And hired rid of. somebody back who he didn't get rid of and just mismanaged it across the board. And I think part of the responsibility for dealing with harassment and discrimination in the workplace is that the people who are maintaining the environment and running the company have to be responsible, they, or at least, in my opinion, more responsible than Tim Lee was. Well, let me so, ask you this. Is there anything that he can do or say to change your mind about the way he runs his company and, yeah, change, and change your feelings beyond, beyond that? It, or change your feelings about the products he puts forth because he has revolutionized movie going in a lot of ways and he's created a brand that 
does a lot of the right things as far as, you know, sure. when you go see a movie, what you want to ha have your experience be like. As you see with Neon, they've got good taste. You know, so is there anything that he can do to still put out art artistic output I, that is beneficial to the world, but still, you know, reconciles this problem? I, I, and I'm with right. you that it is a I problem. I mean, I guess yes. my, my bigger issue is, is at what point does neglect, like where's, where's, the, where's the graph at which you can be influential and successful and yet neglect the safety of mm -hmm. the people that work for you? Like what? Like how successful? How much of a, a proponent of film do you have to be? At like how many? You know how much uh, is the safety of the people that work for him? Like how many people does he get to screw over and ignore their complaints? Like is he if if he wins an Oscar does that mean another ten people? No. Like I guess that's the equation right. I'm asking, right? Like, no, but I mean, and I, I realize it's a rhetorical question that no, you're asking, I, but no, but it's like if if he implements, and I believe they have, have they not? If he implements changes well, within his company and says all the right apologetic things and like takes actual action to follow through on those, is that enough? So is the I guess I have. you would want to see some notable action, but mm -hmm. there doesn't seem to yeah. have been much, yeah. right? It, it's, you know, it was, I guess he did a listening tour and mm -hmm. there's a code of conduct that's been distributed, but you wanna see, look, like part of it is the PR of it, right? Like take a page out of what uh, Mark Wahlberg does. Like, oh, okay, you know what the money I got for this? I'm donating yeah. to the Time's Up Legal Defense mm -hmm. Fund, right? Something like that, something he, like- Cause all the money in the world money. Right, yes. something along the lines of like, okay, cop two, yeah, you know what, I screwed up and I'm gonna do a big thing mm -hmm. to, here's the, here's, you know, if you're not going to step down, then show how you're, like, be real visible about mm -hmm. how you're going to use that position right. to make the change. But quietly just, like, right. business Southwest, as usual. Yeah. South by Southwest is going on right now. We're going to talk about that later on, too. And I mean, like, I'm going to go down there and start some fights. Yes. I mean, so, I mean, yeah. Would you go and talk to Tim League if you totally. were down there? Okay. So totally. a lot of the yeah, events I mean, take place at various Alamo draft houses in Austin. A lot of the, the screenings. And I'm conflicted as to whether or not I'm right. going to go try and see those. Right. And so that's the thing. Is like, I wonder how... In this time we are in, is his brand still as viable, or is there any kind of pushback or any kind of you know reluctance on people? You know, parts? I think that there is I'm a reluctance from a lot of people in our scene mm -hmm. to really like take a stand on this because there's a lot of I think it's a, it's you know within our scene politically dangerous, right? And I'm I, I don't know. It's I, I go back and forth on it. What I will say, and I've offered this to the PR people that I know, like, yeah, you know what? Let me talk to Tim. Mm -hmm. I'll call it out right now. Yeah. Tim, let's talk. Mm -hmm. Like, let's talk about what you're doing because I got some hard questions. Okay, well, you're right? gonna be in Austin. Yeah. So you're going tomorrow. You'll be there for how many days? Uh, I come back on Saturday, so okay. five, six days. All right, so when you come back, you know, report back on whether you saw him and how it went and if you feel... Right, if you hear news that I got slugged in the mouth, <laughs> you'll know why. When you hear that Matt got his butt kicked on, right? on Congress. No, it, look, like, I, I will acknowledge... Tim League's done some great work, but as somebody who's who's run a group, as somebody in that management position, right. when your employees are are making mistakes, like you got to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Like you have to, you have to, right? And when you don't, like it's no just like, oh yeah, well we're gonna try and do better. Like you got to show something, yeah. and I feel like we're not seeing all that much. And Austin would seem to be in, in a world where in a world in where a world. where film can be a male dominated industry. This particular kind of film can be a young male dominated industry. Right. Austin would seem to be a little more diverse, a little right. more woke. We'll find out.